Today, we're looking at a black ink by Karen Dash, Cosmic Black. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. There's timestamps down below so that you can skip around, but if you got the time, I would appreciate you if you check out the entire video. You can follow me over on Instagram, and if you're new here and like fountain pen ink reviews, I would re remind you to subscribe. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I put the ink into this Pilot Vanishing Point with a medium nib, wrote with it for a day, and then used it to take the notes for this video. In order to have some standardization in my writing samples, I always use Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. Now, let's look at the writing sample. I picked this ink up in sample form, so it came in a vial like this. And to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub. A Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, a halo sheen, and a no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, 10 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine and the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 13 seconds to dry. There's no color variation and it didn't show up in the scrubby. Tomoy River with no bleeding and normal Tomoy River ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 16 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine and stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, and 20 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show no color variation, and there was none. And Rhodia, with no bleeding or ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, and 12 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine and the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 15 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show, no color variation, and there was none. I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And what we see is this is a black dye that's quite light pushing its way up. It is depositing itself into the filter paper as it's moving up. But across the top, what we see is there is a dark blue. This is kind of interesting. It wouldn't have been the color I would have thought of. I would have thought of a dark green or a dark purple but there's a dark blue there. Now the one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. There is a line of the black forming at the bottom and it does move up quite a bit before it gets to the top where the black continues moving much heavier and where the blue is. That's the amount of blue that is there, which is why it's so much darker at that point on the filter paper. Resistance tests are done to see how well this ink can be expected to perform on the page and how hard it may be to clean from your pen. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, you should use this in a note-taking situation if you want to go back and highlight and destroy all of your notes and never be able to recover it. Or don't use this in a note-taking situation if you plan on highlighting. Water is only moving the darkest tones of this ink away, but it's leaving a lot of it behind. Pen Flush is doing the same thing that water did. Now, me, when I have to clean it out of my pen, and this pretty much goes with all of the Karen Dash inks, I never had to use anything more than water to ever get them out of my pens completely. One third bleach solution is not completely removing it from the paper, and it's staining it a little bit. So it just seems that the formulation of this ink bonds with paper fairly well, much better than it would to worry about for staining a pen. I test viscosity or flow with a thing called a tilt test. I'll link it somewhere down below or up in the cards. Now for the inks I've tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5 with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Karen Dash Cosmic Black has a viscosity of 1.92, making it a wet ink. 
To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. I average those. Now, for the inks I've tested, I have found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with a realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Karen Dash Cosmic Black has an average dry time of 14 seconds, making its dry time normal. Instead of finding inks that look like Karen Dash Cosmic Black, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went with a nice purple, purple, and I chose Robert Oster's Purple Soul. The second writing sample is done on Yellow Rhodia, Black and Red, and White Lines paper. Here we're looking at the Yellow Rhodia paper just to see if we get any kind of a tone change that goes on, although it's a dark enough black all the time in the writing, I wasn't expecting it. And you can see here, we did not get that. So black and red notebooks. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub with no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shade, five seconds to dry. The medium is the same tone as the extra fine and the stub with no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shade, nine seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show the sheen that if you noticed in the scrubby, it does have a sheen, it just doesn't seem to come through ever in the writing. That's why I don't like uh, swabs as much for seeing the colors. White lines paper. Now we do get quite a bit of bleed through. A lot with the medium, not so bad with the extra fine, although it is there with the extra fine. A lot of uh, show through as a result, result with the medium. Couldn't use the back of the page for the medium, probably could for the extra fine. This stub didn't have any issues. The 1.1 had no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine was the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, and four seconds to dry. And this did very well, remember, for the back of the page. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine in the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, seven seconds to dry, although you could not use the back of the page with this one. The scrubby for both show no color variation, and we didn't get it, and that's all that I have for writing samples. So what do I think of Karen Dash Cosmic Black? This puts down a very solid, consistent black the whole way. And Karen Dash as a brand, if I had to only ever go with one brand of ink, this might likely be it, because they have a bunch of colors that I really do prefer. But you can't say that and ignore the cost of this ink. For your basic black ink, I think this is a little expensive. And as my black, I don't really tend to use this for that reason. So what nib and pen are gonna give the best writing experience? Yes, all of them. Dealer's choice, they always look good in no shading, nice, solid, dark black line all the time. If you've enjoyed this video, remember, I like thumbs up, you like thumbs up, everybody likes thumbs up. Unless you didn't like it, then give me the thumbs down. Both are good. Thanks for watching.